In this video, we're going to start looking at titration curves, which for an acid-base titration show the dependence of the pH of the analyte titrant mixture on the amount or volume of titrant solution added. So as we add, for example, moles of hydroxide to a weak acid solution, what happens to the pH? How does it change? Well, we're going to see that, and we're going to look at some key points on the titration curve and eventually understand how to calculate the pH at a particular point on a titration curve by applying stoichiometry and especially acid-base equilibrium ideas that we've seen in the past already. So let's begin by defining what we mean by a titration curve. In general, a titration curve is a plot of some property of the analyte solution as a function of the amount or volume of titrant added. And in acid-base titrations, it makes the most sense to follow the pH, since as we add strong acid or base to the analyte, we would expect the pH to change. And it changes in a very systematic way, as we'll see here shortly. So for example, we might take an acid, HA, and that's our analyte, and add to it the titrant, a solution of NaOH. This is going to produce sodium A minus, Na plus A minus, and H2O as the products. And we can follow the pH of this mixture of HA and A minus and water and hydronium and hydroxide as a function of the volume of NaOH titrant added. So that NaOH titrant added in red, as we add it, we move left to right along this curve. And if we follow the pH as we do this, we get a curve like you see here in purple. Not surprisingly, the pH starts low, we're dealing with an acid solution, and increases as we add hydroxide. But it doesn't increase in a linear way. It starts out increasing relatively slowly, rapidly increases up to a point, and then starts to level off, and levels off at the pH of the titrant solution, since we can never get the solution more concentrated in hydroxide than the concentration of hydroxide in the red solution, which you can think of as we're diluting that solution as we add it to the analyte. So beginning on the far left of the titration curve, we have essentially before any sodium hydroxide is added, we have an acid solution, and this might be a weak or a strong acid. If it's a strong acid, we have essentially complete dissociation, right? And the HCl, for example, is entirely H3O plus and Cl minus. But if the solution is a weak acid, we still have quite a bit more associated HA than A minus. So let's imagine a weak acid titration here where the concentration of HA in the initial solution is much, much higher than the concentration of A minus. And here we're thinking about the equilibrium situation. Because the acid is weak, it starts off with mostly HA with a little bit of H3O plus and A minus. Small percent ionization is one way to think about that. But as we add base, we convert that HA into A minus. And eventually we hit a point where we've converted half of the HA present in the original HA solution into A minus. This is the point at halfway to equivalence, or the half equivalence point, you'll sometimes hear it called. And at this point, this is essentially a definition, right? The concentration of HA in the analyte titrant mixture is equal to the concentration of A minus at that point. The two are equal because we've added enough hydroxide to neutralize half of the total amount of HA in the solution, leaving the remaining HA molarity equal to the molarity of A minus in the solution. That's important for reasons we'll return to when we discuss weak acid strong base titrations a little bit later. As we continue to add hydroxide, more HA gets converted to A- until we reach the point where just enough hydroxide has been added to completely neutralize the HA, to react completely with the HA to convert it to A-. And so the moles of hydroxide added at this point are equal to the initial moles of HA present in the original analyte solution before any titrant was added. That's the definition of the equivalence point. Now, in terms of equilibrium and thinking about equilibrium here, well, at this point, we neutralize all the HA to A-. minus, But that A- minus reacts with water to a small degree to produce HA and hydroxide. That's the base ionization equilibrium of A-. minus. And so at the equivalence point, we have much, much more A- minus than HA, but there is a little bit of HA around. 
Essentially, you can think of the equivalence point here, and we'll return to this point later, as a solution of Na plus A minus in water at that point. We've added enough hydroxide to turn that original HA solution into a solution of Na plus A minus completely. And that solution, because it's a solution of a basic salt, A minus is a weakly basic anion, will have a pH greater than 7 due to the generation of hydroxide. We'll return to that point later, but just conceptually here for now, think of that equivalence point as an Na plus A minus solution which, with much, much more A minus than HA at equilibrium. Now, at the equivalence point, because the moles of hydroxide equal the initial moles of HA, we can use the volume of NaOH added to that point to determine the original molarity of the HA solution. That's the stoichiometric approach that we applied in the last video. But we can also use the pH at these two points, halfway to equivalence and at the equivalence point, to gain some information about acidity constants. pKa's, the pKa of the acid HA, can be measured from the pH at halfway to equivalence, and we'll see how that works later, although if you think about the henderson hasselbalch equation, you'll be able to think through this on your own. We can also use the pH at the equivalence point to infer pKb of A minus, although we can also get that by applying 14 minus the pKa of, of HA, but the pH at the equivalence point follows from pKb for A minus. So we can get information about the equilibrium properties of the weak acid HA and its conjugate base, the weak base A minus, from a titration curve as well. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, messy details of calculations with titrations, I want to talk a little bit more about the conceptual underpinnings of titration. And on this slide, focus in on the difference between titrating a strong acid and a weak acid. So in both cases here, we're using sodium hydroxide as the titrant, that's a strong base, but there are big differences in the titration curves of a strong acid, like HCl, which we see on the left, and a weak acid, like HA, which we see on the right. I encourage you to pause the video right now and actually look at these titration curves. Look for important differences between the two curves. There are at least, I'd say, three important qualitative differences between these curves that we're going to emphasize, and it's worth pausing and trying to spot these before we dig into the details. All right. Let's start with the initial pH before any titrant is added, because this is the most straightforward to understand. The initial pH of this HCl solution is at 1. The initial pH of the weak acid solution, HA, is quite a bit higher, up around 3. And this isn't that surprising. HA is a weak acid. It's going to have a higher pH at the same concentration. Let's assume that the total concentrations of HCl and HA are equivalent in these two titrations. The weak acid HA will have a higher pH initially than the stronger acid HCl, which is naturally at a lower pH. So that's pretty straightforward to understand. A second thing to notice here concerns what happens in between that initial point and the equivalence point. The HA curve looks quite a bit flatter than the HCl curve. And this is because what we, we create as we add hydroxide to an HA solution is a buffer, right? We are converting HA into A minus. So say halfway along between the initial and the equivalence points, we've got an equal mixture of HA and A minus in solution. That's a buffer. We got a weak acid and its conjugate base in solution in equal or roughly equal on either side of that halfway point amounts. This is a buffer, and we see that in the relatively flat shape of the titration curve in this region. On the other hand, the HCl titration curve lacks that flat region entirely. There is no inflection point, if you like, in the titration curve in the language of calculus, right, in the mathematical language. This is not a buffer, because even though we are converting, well, you could argue we're not actually converting HCl into Cl minus, since HCl in the original solution is already dissociated into H3O plus and OH minus. So the reaction that's really occurring when we titrate HCl with hydroxide is between H3O plus and OH minus, not between HCl and OH minus. So we do not generate a buffer in the titration of the HCl solution really at any point, which is why the pH just increases kind of without ever flattening out. 
when we titrate HCl. The third thing to notice concerns the vertical position of the equivalence point, the pH at equivalence. If we look at the HCl titration, what do we end up with when we titrate HCl with sodium hydroxide? Well, the equivalence point pH is 7, and it's straightforward to understand why when we realize that what we've got at the equivalence point is just a solution of sodium chloride and water. All of the H3O plus has been converted to water by the added hydroxide, sodium cation as a spectator, chloride anion as a spectator. We've got a solution of Na plus Cl minus in water at the equivalence point. This is a neutral salt, pH of 7, right? And so it makes sense that this equivalence point is at a pH of 7. The weak acid titration is very different. This equivalence point pH is way up at 8.72. What's going on with that? Well, at this equivalence point, we've converted all of the HA into A- via reaction with hydroxide. So what we've got at that point is a solution of Na plus A- in water. And A- because HA is a weak acid, we know that A- is a weak base. And so a solution of Na plus A- in water is going to be a weakly basic solution with a pH greater than 7. And here it comes out to 8.72. We could calculate that if we knew the pKb of A- or the pKa of HA, but we can also measure it, and the measurement makes sense. When titrating a weak acid with a strong base, the pH at the equivalence point will be greater than 7 because we'll have a basic solution at that equivalence point. Now, one other thing I'll mention, which is not very nicely depicted on these curves, but happens in real life, is that the titration curves beyond the equivalence point are basically the same. They approach the pH of the titrant solution asymptotically as we continue to add titrant. Because once we've converted all the HA into A- in the weak acid case, for example, we're just piling on hydroxide, and the pH is going to be dominated by the added hydroxide from the titrant. The same is true in the HCl, the strong acid titration. Once we have neutralized all of the H3O+, the pH of the solution will be dominated by the added hydroxide from the titrant. So both of these titration curves asymptotically approach a pH of 13, which is the pH of the titrant solution. And the analyte titrant mixture can never exceed this pH because we've got a little bit of that analyte solution that we started with, right? And so in essence, we're diluting the titrant solution as we continue to add it in. So the concentration of hydroxide, for example, can never be larger than 0.1 mole per liter, which we started with in the titrant.